Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. A big hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I've been excited all week about coming and sharing this word with you. I can tell you that God, He speaks sometimes. And man, if you'll just listen, if you'll just listen to the voice of God, man, it will just encourage you and just help you out and just help you to get through whatever you may be going through. If I could do anything, is just... Uh, if you would just stop for a minute and just listen to the voice of God. Just listen and let He speak to you, Bill. Here, I'm talking about one word that He spoke to me, maybe two words that He spoke to me that man have just really, really done something on the inside of me that's really changed a lot of things in my life, the way I look at things. Because, uh, man, it's just so encouraging. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll get into the Word. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, God, for this day, Lord. Thank you for this time you've given us to come and fellowship in your house today, God. And we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our little church, God, in our midst, God, this body of believers, God, this people. God, we ask, Father, you continue to use us. God, we ask, God, tonight that you just anoint, God, my lips, Father of clay, God, that you would just speak through me tonight, God, that your word would go forth, God. It would fall on that good ground, Father, that you speak of, God, and that, Father, would produce fruit to God and begin to grow, God, and flourish, God. And we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings you bestowed upon us, God. We ask now, God, that you go with us, God. Father, and just go with us and anoint, Father, for your spirit to fall in this place, God. You're welcome here, God, tonight. We give you the praise and the glory for it all. And the people of God said, Amen. I take my scripture tonight out of the book of John, chapter 12. You can turn there if you want. I'm going to read... Uh, just a little section of scripture that God had given to me and then I'll do a little background uh, so uh, in John chapter 12 and verse 23 is where I'll start and Jesus is speaking here of the forecoming of what is to happen to him and Jesus answered in the 23rd verse of the 12th chapter of John he said and Jesus answered them saying the red letters of Jesus the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified amen there's ever been a time that's come that the, that the that the glory that the Son of Man should be glorified. It's the time in which we live. Amen. Amen. He said in 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any, my, uh, any man serve me, him will my father honor. I go back and take my text tonight from the 24th verse right there. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground. And I stop. This message derives from I was standing in here Sunday morning. I'd been listening to God and God had been speaking to me. But I was sitting in here Sunday morning. And there was a napkin, and then the paper and the tissues were sitting up here on the top. If you were here for Sunday school, they were sitting right here like that. Gillis walked around, and he picked one up. And when he picked one up, one fell. And he spoke that scripture into my heart. He said, if a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. We've been talking about being witnesses for Christ, and what we've been talking about... uh, teaching people about Jesus and trying to lead people to Christ, inviting them to church. But unless we become as that grain of wheat and we fall to the ground and die, Jesus was our example. Jesus was our example, Bill. He was that corn of wheat that went upon the cross. He had the Word. He flourished. He grew when He died, resurrected. Amen. When He began to grow, we are the fruit. Amen. Of His labor. We have to go through the same thing. He had to die to himself. Even if you continue down to that scripture, uh, he says, uh, if you, even if you continue down through there and read, uh, what does he say? He says, uh, uh, but that now my soul, tr- my soul troubled. Now is my soul troubled. In the 27th verse, 
And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. He didn't want to die. But he had to die to the, the same with you and me. We, it's hard to die to this flesh. It's hard to die to myself. It's hard, Brother Harold. It's, it's hard for me uh, to lay things down. It's hard uh, because I want to do it. Because that's what I want. When we really don't ever take into consideration, well, is really that what God wants in our life? But unless we be as that grain or that corn of wheat and we fall to the ground and we die to ourselves, he said that corn of wheat, he said unless it falls into the ground. Jesus had to be buried. We ha- our life has to be buried. We have to be buried. It, it has to fall into the ground because if it doesn't, he said it'll be by itself and it'll be alone. You'll be without hope. You'll be without peace. You'll be without joy. You'll be without all those things. Why? Because there is no life in Christ outside of the vine. Amen? Outside of the tree. There, 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 there is no life outside of that. And so therefore, if we don't fall to the ground, into the ground, and die, we, we even, we even got to be buried. We, we got to be graveyard dead. I'm talking about buried. Six feet, I mean in the ground. Our lives. Ourselves. We want to win people to Christ. We must die to ourselves. We, we want to be an example to people of Jesus. We have to die to ourselves because that's exactly what Jesus did. That was his, he was the example that we, oh yeah, our flesh is tired. We was coming down the road. Micah said, is anybody else tired? <laughs> And I'm like, you're 12. I'm 40. Yes, I'm tired. I didn't say that, but that's what I thought. And that's what Tim would say. You're 12. I'm 63. Fix to be 64. Yes, I'm tired. Yes. But we have to die to ourselves. What am I going to get out of, if I'd have stayed at home tonight? What, what am I going to, what? What, what am I going to get if I would have just chose to do something else? What's that? Am I truly being true to God and wanting what He wants for my life? Or am I doing what I want to do? I like it. So I'm going to do it. God says you can't do that. Well, I like it though. I want to do it. No, God said you can't do it. So we have to die to ourselves. And it's hard to do. He wants us to push back our plate sometimes. And there's more to just uh, there's more to this life than just you know uh, going and say, "Oh, well, Jesus." Loved. We have to sometimes we have to break ourselves. We have to fast and we have to pray. We have to push our plate back sometimes. I don't know about you, Harold, but it's hard for me to push my plate back. I like to eat. I don't have any problems. If somebody says, "Hey, I got food," you come and come and eat. Until I try to deny myself that. But I'm telling you, if we want to increase our faith, we want to grow stronger in the Lord, we have to die to ourselves. Put ourselves aside. I, I, I can be honest, I, I usually fast every time before I come and, and I preach because I have never been one that I could, I could eat, I could never eat before I get in the pulpit. And I've never been able to. But I did today. I, I don't know what was different, but just it wasn't the same compelling that God put in my spirit tonight to do, to do that. So I went ahead and I eat. But when I don't, Harold, I, I sit there whenever I don't. It's like, man, live boy, she got chicken. <laughs> I, I, could, I, I could probably eat. Lord, I, I could probably, I could probably, you know, that's me wanting that. That's not, and God said, no, deny yourself. You, I want God to use me when I stand there. I don't want to be just somebody that stood up here and seen. I want God to touch your life. I, I don't care if he does anything else for me. He's done enough for me already. I want to see you guys. Take this word. I want it to become a... When I realized and this became alive to me that Jesus Christ was that corn of wheat that fell to the ground and that was whenever they took him off the cross and they actually planted The devil planted him. So the devil planted his own demise. The devil destroyed it. The, the devil defeated himself because he took Jesus and he, and he planted that, that wheat in the ground. And then when he came back, he sprang forth and he's been producing fruit ever since. That's the way our lives should be. Amen. We die to ourselves. When that became alive to me and I, I, I seen that, I thought, God, 
I, I am the fruit of the cross. I am the fruit of Calvary. I am the fruit of the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm the fruit of what He done on the cross for me. I, I'm, I'm the fruit. Well, the thing about it is, is what happens to fruit when it gets ripe, Bill? You know a lot about garden. What happens? It, it falls to the ground. If you don't pick it, it falls to the ground. And it dies. And the next thing you know, what? There's another what? There's another fruit tree. And unless we have fallen to the ground, amen, just like that corn of wheat, when it comes up, they're all in there together. There's a bunch of, there's like a pod of seeds. And that's what they use to make flour with. They collect those and they grind them up and that's what they make flour with. Uh, I can't remember, I can't forget, somebody referred to that back in biblical times as the stalk of... I don't know. It, it, anyway, I'll think about it. But, they, they caught, but wheat was, was everything. It was a, was a huge deal to these people. And that's why God references this in a big deal because he could speak to them about this plant because, see, whenever that thing comes up, they pod together. Then whenever it begins to... to whenever it gets ripe, then it falls off to the ground and all them seeds separate. And that's the same thing that we've done. We're, we are the fruit of the cross, okay? Well, we've ripened. When we accept Christ in our life, so we fell to the ground. Now we have become a tree. Now we have become a tree. And when he talks about all that, the bad branches and all that being here, I get to think about, man, I'd be cut to ribbons. Because, man, I, I, there's a lot of things in my life that I'm not doing that I need to be doing. There's a lot of things in my life that I'm not dead to. There's a lot of things that I'm doing uh, that I need to seek God and ask Him for more and ask Him to move and ask Him to touch in my life. When He talks about, when He starts pruning on the tree. I don't know, I mean, I know you guys have pruned trees. You, you know, I, I prune an apple tree in the front yard about every year. And I think sometimes when I prune it, it don't put on as much fruit, but then sometimes when I prune it, it just explodes. I didn't prune it this year because last year it just put on an enormous amount of apples. And then, then again this year I didn't prune it in the spring, and it brought a bunch more apples on this year. Now, I'll probably have to prune it next year, and I'm, and I'm learning because maybe I should do it every other year, not every year. Give it a little chance to heal itself maybe. I don't know. But I'm learning. But we have to be like that tree. We have fallen. If we've accepted Christ, we've ripened and we've fallen to the ground and now we've sprang forth and we have become the tree and now what kind of fruit are you bearing? Is it good fruit? Some of us are bearing fruit that are good but there's maybe a bad spot on us or two. Some of us, unfortunately, maybe there's got a worm or something in our fruit from time to time. But there's a way to fix all that. I mean, we just have to continually, I mean... You have to tend to those fruit trees just like you have to, you have to, uh, you have to, they, they have stuff that gets rid of bugs and you have to make sure that the bug bites and stuff don't get all that stuff. That's what the Word does for us. That, that, it, helps us it helps us to, to repel the worms in our life and, and, and repel those bad places in our life that where our fruit is coming forth and maybe, maybe, yeah, there, maybe there's some bad spots in it. But God's there to help us. and He said that we have become the tree. We're the fruit of his labor. And so now, our fruit, what are we doing? Unless we die to ourselves and fall to the ground and fall into. Don't, don't forget that's very, very important. It says, Verily, verily, I send you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground. Into the ground. Don't just fall on top of the ground. If you fall on top of the ground, he spoke another parable about what? The good ground? The rocky ground? If it fell on top of the ground, what happened? He said the sun came and zapped it. You throw a seed just out on top of the ground and you don't cover it up, and it'll die. It'll never become anything. It'll lay there and never be nothing. Be by itself. But Harold, just like anything else, you, you take that seed and you throw it on the ground and you cover it up just a little bit. Don't cover it up too deep. It'll still come up. It just may take a while. It falls in the ground. When we become that tree, 
and we begin to bear fruit in our life. We have to die to ourselves. That, that's the biggest thing that God, when he spoke that word to me,